Praise be to Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, my dear children. How are you all doing? I hope you are doing great and you had a nice time last week enjoying with parents, siblings, and friends. So, today we will start lesson 9 and let's start this class with a small prayer. Let's all rise, join our hands, and close our eyes. Almighty Father, we give you thanks and we praise you. We glorify your name. Lord Jesus, be with us today as we try to learn more about you and your church. Holy Spirit, shower us with the gifts of wisdom and knowledge. Mother Mary, intercede for us to your Son, Jesus Christ. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. So last class we had done lesson 8 and I had given you a summary of all the chapters up to lesson 8, right? So I had also told you the way to remember who is the church. Do you remember what I told you? So it's how we spell church, C-H-U-R-C-H. So who is the church? It is you who is the church, right? So up to lesson 9, we studied that who is the church and what are the characteristics of the church. So we studied that church is basically the people chosen by God, people who are redeemed, believers of God and people who are led by the Spirit. We also saw that church is the priestly people, the prophetic people and also that church is the body of Christ. Now from lesson 9 onwards, we are going to see certain characteristics of the church. For example, in lesson 9, the title is the missionary church. So we see that the church has a characteristics of being missionary. Now in the text, we come across two Bible verses in the beginning of lesson 9. Can we open the text and which are those two Bible verses? The first is verse from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 21. It says, As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. So Jesus says that he came down into this world because his Father in heaven, Almighty God, had sent him into this world. And then later in the paragraph, we read another word of God from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. And it says that, Go and make disciples in all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And instruct them to observe all that I have commanded you. So these two verses tells us the mission that was entrusted to Jesus by his Almighty Father and then later, in the Gospel of Matthew, we read that Jesus has entrusted the same mission to the church which he established in this world. Now, in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 17, we read why God sent his only Son to the world. So, we read that he sent his son not to condemn the world, but so that the world can be saved through him. So that is the reason for which Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was sent into this world. So now what is the mission that we have at our hands 
that God entrusted Jesus to do and then Jesus entrusted us to do it. So we see that Jesus came down to this world to fulfill his father's will. And what was his father's will? His father's will was to live among his people in this world, to share in their joy and sorrows. And ultimately, he wanted his son to sacrifice his life on the cross so that the whole world is saved. We know that Jesus Christ sacrificed his life on the cross so that we may have a life free from sin, free from the bondage of sin. So we know how he went through his passion, how he went through his suffering on the way to Calvary. And all this was the mission entrusted to him by God. And he fulfilled his father's mission completely without anything left. And now he has entrusted the same mission to us. It is basically to make known the Son of God to all humanity and to make known his love for us, the love that he showed us on the cross. And so that becomes our mission also. So what do you mean by a mission? Now, as students and as kids of your parent, what is your mission? All of us have some kind of mission in our life, right? So as a student, your mission is to get the maximum marks in the exam, is it not? So for that, what are the steps you are going to do? You will study every day or keep a timetable and slowly move towards fulfilling your mission of passing the exam, getting good marks, is it not? And as children of your parent, what is your mission? It is basically to obey your parents, is it not? And be good children in eyes of your parent, helping them in whatever way you can. So similarly, church also entrusts us with certain mission the task that we need to do as members of this church. So in this lesson, we come across a number of subtopics. Let's go through them one by one. We have seven subtopics and they are Jesus Christ, the one sent by God, the mission of the church for evangelization, the missionary work of the apostle, the evangelization work of St. Thomas the Apostle, evangelization by the Western missionaries, the missionary spirit of the Zero Malaba Church and its growth. Every Christian is a missionary. So coming to the second subtopic, the mission of the church for evangelization. So how do church fulfill its mission of evangelization. What is evangelization basically? So in very simple terms we can say that evangelization means to make known Jesus Christ to others. And the church fulfills its evangelization mission in three ways. First, church proclaims Jesus Christ to people who have not heard of him. So unless you hear about someone, how can you trust him or believe him, right? So it is very important that you proclaim Jesus Christ to those who are not aware of him or not have heard of him. What is the second way? that the church fulfill its mission of evangelization. It is by helping the faithful, those who are already the members of the church, to deepen their faith in the knowledge and their mysteries of faith. So the church does this 
by the various sacraments administered by the church. Right now, we are attending a Sunday class, right? So, this is also a way the church fulfills its evangelization mission. So, we are also faithful, we are also members of the church. But then we need to deepen our knowledge in our faith. The third way that the church does its evangelization mission is by bringing back the members of the church who have become weak in their faith. So, some of us are weak in our faith. We have lost a belief in Lord Jesus Christ. And so, we need someone to help us and guide us and bring us back to the love of God, to love of Jesus. So, that is again one way in which the church does its evangelization mission. Next, in the lesson we see how the apostles fulfill their mission that was entrusted to them by Jesus Christ. So, we see throughout the life of Jesus Christ that he chose his apostles and then he trained them and then he instructs them to do as he has done to serve the people as he has served them, to live for them, to take care of the downtrodden in the society, to take care of the poor. And by showing their love for people, showing their love for Jesus. So, Jesus did not just select them and ask them to go and talk or proclaim about Jesus Christ. He chose them just as we have seen from the beginning of class 8 lessons that how God chooses or selects his people. He chose the disciples and he trained them. And how did he train them? By showing how to live in this world in harmony, in peace and love with the fellow human beings. That is how he trained them. He did not train them just by instructing, but he showed through his life. And that is how the disciples got trained. And then he told them to do the same to others. And as he went to heaven, he promised them to send them an advocate or a help, helper, who will help them and guide them and strengthen them in their mission in this world. So, we see that on the day of Pentecost, the apostles who were hiding in one room, afraid of going out. When they received the Holy Spirit, they were strengthened and they became strong. And they opened their doors and they went out and they started preaching. They started proclaiming about Jesus Christ. They started witnessing Jesus Christ. And they spoke on the basis of their own experience with Jesus Christ. So, that is very important. When we go for proclaiming Jesus Christ, we ourselves should have our own God experience. Only then it becomes effective when we talk about Lord Jesus Christ to the people. And then we see the father of our faith, Saint Thomas, who came to India, who came to Kerala in AD 52 at Kodungallur. And it is from him that we received our faith. We call him the Doubting Thomas. We know the episode where Jesus Christ appeared to the disciples and St. Thomas was not there. And then he registered his protest since he could not see Jesus Christ. We see like a child, St. Thomas told that I won't believe unless I put my hands on his wounds and on his side. And so, Jesus appeared again and he asked St. Thomas to put his palm on his side. And we see how St. Thomas proclaimed his faith, my Lord and my God. So, we will learn more about St. Thomas in our part 2 of lesson 9. Let us close this class with a small prayer. Let us all rise. Join our hands and close our eyes. 
Almighty Father, we thank you and we praise you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for being with us today in this class, helping us to learn more about your mission, the mission that you have entrusted to the church. Holy Spirit, guide us in our mission. Mother Mary, pray for us. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise be to Jesus.